Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi. Jeg hedder Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk på 3 minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson you learned how to be grateful to people by saying tak. In this lesson you learn some of the most common greetings used in Denmark. Er I klar? Are you ready? Så lad os begynde. So let's start. The most used informal greeting is hi. Hi. Hi means hi. You can use it when you meet people and it can be used with anyone. But it isn't the only way to greet someone. We also have good day. Good day. It is a more time-specific greeting and is equivalent to hello. 
Literally, good day means good day. As a rule of thumb, you can use good day only during the daytime, from morning until evening. During the evening, we say go aften. Go aften. Aften is Danish for evening, so go aften means good evening. Finally, in the mornings, we say go morn. Go morn, which means good morning. Go day. Go aften and go morn are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these again. When parting ways for a long time, we usually say "ha det godt." Ha det godt. Ha det godt means be well, but a better translation is all the best. Finally, in Danish, we have an expression meaning "see you." Vi ses. Vi ses. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Danish. Let's review them all again. When meeting friends or someone we don't know, hi or good day. In the morning, go morn. In the evening, go aften. When leaving for a long time, had a gut. When leaving and implying see you soon, we cease. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Louise's insights. In formal situations, Danish people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, no matter their gender, it's common to give hugs. Don't be afraid to try it out with your Danish friends. During the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase "taler du engelsk." Do you already know it? I'll tell you all about it in the next dance for three minutes lesson. På gensyn. Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to Danish Class 101.com's Dansk på 3 minutter, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson, you learned how to use the verb at skulle, which among other things means to go in Danish. We will continue a lesson series dedicated to very common Danish verbs. The second verb in a series is at leve, which here means to do. So imagine someone asks you, hvad laver du? That means, what are you doing? So if you're doing your homework, for example, you will say in Danish, Jeg laver lektier. Jeg laver lektier. So let's break down this answer. First, we had jeg laver, which is I'm doing. It is the present form of the verb at leve, to do. Next was lektier, which is a noun for homework in the plural form. This noun is always in the plural form if it means homework. Note that in Danish you can use this verb to say that you aren't doing anything. For example, if someone asks you what you're doing and you're doing nothing, you can tell them, Jeg laver ingenting, which literally means I'm doing nothing. Here we're using the present tense form. Let's look at some other questions with which we can use the verb at leve. Remember at skulle from the previous lesson. This time we will use it along with at leve to form the question, Hvad skal vi leve? What are we going to do? Hvad skal vi lave? As you might remember, to direct a question at someone else, all you do is change the pronoun. To ask someone, what are you going to do? You simply switch vi with du in the previous sentence. Hvad skal du lave? Hvad skal du lave? Finally, let's look at how to ask if someone is busy at the moment. To do this, you have to place the verb at lave first in the sentence. So it would look like this. Laver du noget nu? Laver du noget nu? Literally, this translates as, are you doing anything now? Noget means something or anything, and nu means now. Now it's time for Louise's insights. In Danish, we often say, hvad skal du lave i aften? Which means, what are you going to do tonight? For example, if you want to go out with that friend tonight, you can ask this question to see if they're available. It will sound very natural. Hvad skal du lave i aften? In this lesson, you learn how to use the verb at leve in many different contexts, and I'm sure it will help you a lot. Next time, we'll learn another very useful and romantic verb, at kunne lide. I'll be waiting for you in the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson. Vi ses again. Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to Danishclass101.com's 
dansk 3 minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson you learned how to ask when questions in Danish. This time you're going to ask who questions. Imagine you want to ask your friend who the girl sitting behind him is. You can pass him a note that reads Hvem er det bag dig? Hvem er det bag dig? This means who is that behind you? So let's break down this question. First we had Hvem, which is the basic translation of who in Danish. Er means is, the present tense of the verb at være, which we have already studied. Det means that. And finally, bag dig, which is behind you. Dig is the object pronoun for you. Altogether it is, hvem er det bag dig? So in Danish, who is translated as hvem. If you want to ask, who are these people, you can say, hvem er disse mennesker? Here's another example using hvem. If you're in a museum, you can ask, hvem malede dette billede? This means, who painted this painting? A similar word derived from hvem is vis. In this case, the meaning is whose. So if you want to ask, whose pencil is it? You will have to say, vis blyant er det. If we break down this question, it is vis, which is whose. Blyant, which is pencil. Then we have er, which is the present tense of the verb at være, which you should know. And finally, de, which means it. You can also use the word vem to ask for which person is it. So if you want to know for which person is this piece of cake, you can ask, vem er dette stykke kage til? Now it's time for Louise's insights. If someone that you didn't expect is knocking on your door in Denmark, you can ask, vem er det? Before opening the door. This literally means, who is it? Although it's not that common to ask this. Usually Danes will just say, hello. In this lesson, you learn how to correctly use vim. The next lesson will be a last of this absolute beginner series. You will deal with the final question word, hvorfor. I'll be waiting for you in the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson. På gensyn! Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Hej. Hej. Hvordan går det? Det går godt. Hvad med dig? Det går også godt. Hej, jeg hedder Emma. Hvad hedder du? Jeg hedder William. Rart at møde dig. I lige måde. When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. 
When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step -step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Today, traditional classrooms are no longer the only or even best place to learn a new language. More and more people are finding that they can easily learn a language just about anywhere they have a few minutes of spare time, including their daily commute to work. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the average American spends over 50 minutes a day commuting to and from work, or over 300 hours a year. But rather than simply sitting in traffic and wasting the time, you can instead use your daily commute to literally learn a new language in just a few short months. Our language learning program has specialized learning tools that you can use on your commute to and from the office to master a language in your spare time. What are some reasons traditional classroom settings just aren't the best option for most people in today's fast-paced world? Difficulty getting to and from class. Learning on someone else's schedule. Very expensive and may cost thousands of dollars to complete. Can take years to finally complete classes and learn the language. The simple truth is the traditional classroom instruction is simply not a viable option for most people in today's very fast-paced, time-starved world. Now, let's examine how you can learn a language faster, more easily, and at far less expense than traditional classes, all during your commute to work and back home again. Three reasons your daily commute can help you master a language in the next year. On average, Americans spend more than 300 hours per year commuting. During the commute to and from work, over six hours a week is completely wasted. The time isn't used to help you reach any goals or objectives. But thanks to online language learning platforms with audiobooks and other resources that you can access during your commute, you can easily transform wasted time into progress toward learning a new language. With over 300 hours available annually, your daily commute could provide you with enough time to gain significant skills in a new language each and every year. Increase your earning potential while commuting to work. How would you like to transform all those spare commuting hours each week into more money for a new car, house, or even a dream vacation? According to research, someone making $30,000 per year can boost their annual income by $600 or more per year by learning a second language. Over the course of a lifetime, that's a significant amount. How? From work-at-home translation jobs to working overseas, there are many ways to leverage your second language into more money in your bank account. So instead of wasting your precious time, you can make your commute more productive and eventually profitable. The more languages you learn, the higher your income potential. Repetition is key to mastering a new language. Not sure if it's practical to learn another language while commuting to and from work each day? Well, not only is it possible, learning in your car on the way to and from work each day can actually help you learn and master any language quickly. The simple truth is that repetition is absolutely vital to truly internalizing and mastering any language. So, if you listen to audiobooks or even audio lessons on your commute to work and then repeat the same lesson on your commute home, the information is more likely to be locked in to your long-term memory. 
Our language learning program has been helping people learn and master language in the comfort of their home, during their daily commute, or any place they have a few spare minutes of time. Here are five features of our program that make it easy to learn a new language while commuting to and from work. First, the largest collection of audio lessons on the planet by native speaker instructors. Every single week, native speaker instructors create new audio lessons. All lessons are short, to the point, and guaranteed to improve your mastery of a language. Second, the word of the day. Simply exposing yourself to new information and vocabulary terms helps increase your fluency and mastery of your target language. So every single day, check out the word of the day and memorize it during your commute. It's a quick and easy way to boost your vocabulary every day. Third, daily dose mini lessons. Have a short commute to work but still want to make progress towards learning more than just vocabulary? Not a problem. Our daily dose mini lessons are one minute or less and are designed to improve your grammar, conversations, and pronunciation. Fourth, all content is available on a convenient mobile app. You don't need a PC or tablet to learn during your daily commute. Instead, all of our lessons, tools, and resources are available 24-7 via our mobile app. That means you can access all of our audio lessons and other tools during your commute to work or anytime you have a few spare minutes. Fifth, audiobooks and other supplemental resources. In addition to the world's largest online collection of HD audio lessons, our language learning program has audiobooks to enhance your understanding and make it more convenient than ever to learn a language during your commute. The average commute time of most Americans is over 300 hours each year, and it's the perfect opportunity to learn and master a new language. Use the dead time during your daily commute to learn a new language and potentially boost your lifetime earnings. Whatever your motivation, our language learning program has the tools and resources necessary to help you learn a new language each year during your commute to and from work. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! En mand og en kvinde taler sammen. Hvad vil de gøre først? Hvad vil du lave i dag? Jeg vil gerne ud og se en film. Okay, jeg vil se en baseballkamp på tv. Jeg vil også gerne ud og handle. Baseballkampen starter kl. 13. Okay, så lad os se filmen, og derefter kan du se kampen. I orden. Så tager vi ud og handler i aften. Hvad vil de gøre først? En mand og en kvinde taler sammen. Hvad vil de gøre først? Hvad vil du lave i dag? Jeg vil gerne ud og se en film. Okay. Jeg vil se en baseballkamp på tv. Jeg vil også gerne ud og handle. Baseballkampen starter kl. 13. Okay, så lad os se filmen, og derefter kan du se kampen. I orden. Så tager vi ud og handler i aften. En kvinde spørger en butiksassistent om noget i en bogbutik. Hvilken bog vil kvinden kigge nærmere på? Undskyld mig. Jeg vil gerne se på den bog på hylden der. Hvilken bog vil du have? Den om biler. Lige et øjeblik. Denne her? Ja, den der. Værsgo. Hvilken bog vil kvinden kigge nærmere på? En kvinde spørger en butiksassistent om noget i en bogbutik. Hvilken bog vil kvinden kigge nærmere på? Undskyld mig, jeg vil gerne se på den bog på hylden der. Hvilken bog vil du have? Den om biler. Lige et øjeblik. Denne her? Ja, den der. Værsgo. En mand taler med en butiksassistent. Hvilken skjorte vil han købe? Hmm. Hvilken skjorte synes du er bedst? Den hvide eller den blå? Tja, jeg synes, den blå er god. Den står godt til den grå jakke. 
Synes du? Men den går ikke godt med mit røde slips, gør den? Ja, uh, yeah, jeg er enig. Okay, så tager jeg den hvide, ikke den blå. Hvilken skjorte vil han købe? En mand taler med en butiksassistent. Hvilken skjorte vil han købe? Hmm, hvilken skjorte synes du er bedst? Den hvide eller den blå? Tja, jeg synes, den blå er god. Den står godt til den grå jakke. Synes du? Men den går ikke godt med mit røde slips, gør den? Tja, ja, jeg er enig. Okay, så tager jeg den hvide, ikke den blå. En mand er i en fastfoodrestaurant. Hvilket sæt bestiller han? Undskyld mig, kan jeg få det særlige burgersæt? Ja, vælg venligst mellem pomfrit eller salat. Salat, tak. Okay, hvad vil du have at drikke til? Cola, tak. Hvilket sæt bestiller han? En mand er i en fastfoodrestaurant. Hvilket sæt bestiller han? Undskyld mig, kan jeg få det særlige burgersæt? Ja, vælg venligst mellem pomfrit eller salat. Salat, tak. Okay, hvad vil du have at drikke til? Cola, tak. En mand ringer til lægens kontor. Hvad tid skal han være ved lægens kontor senest? Goddag. Hvad kan jeg gøre for dig? Hvad tid lukker I i dag? Vi lukker klokken 18. Vær så venlig at komme inden 17.30. Okay, tak skal du have. Hvad tid skal han være ved lægens kontor senest? En mand ringer til lægens kontor. Hvad tid skal han være ved lægens kontor senest? Goddag. Hvad kan jeg gøre for dig? Hvad tid lukker I i dag? Vi lukker klokken 18. Vær så venlig at komme inden 17.30. Okay, tak skal du have. En mand og en kvinde kigger på menuen i en restaurant. Hvad bestiller manden? Hvad bestiller du? Pizzaen ser god ud. Jeg tror, jeg tager den. Jeg fik pizza i går, så... Okay, så. Hvad med burgeren? Mmm, det lyder lækkert. Den tager jeg. Hvad bestiller manden? En mand og en kvinde kigger på menuen i en restaurant. Hvad bestiller manden? Hvad bestiller du? Pizzaen ser god ud. Jeg tror, jeg tager den. Jeg fik pizza i går, så... Okay, så. Hvad med burgeren? Mmm, det lyder lækkert. Den tager jeg. En kvinde og en mand kigger på et billede. Hvilket billede kigger de på? Dette er et billede af det fodboldhold, din søn er på, ikke? Hvilken en er din søn? Ham her. Åh, oh, han er den højeste. Jep, han er endda højere end mig. Hvilket billede kigger de på? En kvinde og en mand kigger på et billede. Hvilket billede kigger de på? Dette er et billede af det fodboldhold, din søn er på, ikke? Hvilken en er din søn? Ham her. Åh, oh, han er den højeste. Jep, han er endda højere end mig. Underviserne vil at lave en kage. Hvad kom underviseren i den? I dag det skal vi lave en kage. Først bland smør og sukker. Derefter tilsæt to æg og bland det godt. Tilsæt mel og bland det forsigtigt. Sæt det i ovnen og bag i 50 minutter. Det var det. Hvad kom underviseren i den? Underviserne vil at lave en kage. Hvad kom underviseren i den? 
I dag det skal vi lave en kage. Først bland smør og sukker. Derefter tilsæt to æg og bland det godt. Tilsæt mel og bland det forsigtigt. Sæt det i ovnen og bag i 50 minutter. Det var det. En dreng læser op fra hans dagbog. Hvad var det første drengen gjorde i dag? Vejret var supert i dag. I eftermiddags tog jeg ud og svømmede i poolen. Og om aftenen tog jeg i biografen. Jeg studerede også hele formiddagen. I dag var ikke dårlig. Hvad var det første drengen gjorde i dag? En dreng læser op fra hans dagbog. Hvad var det første drengen gjorde i dag? Vejret var supert i dag. I eftermiddags tog jeg ud og svømmede i poolen. Og om aftenen tog jeg i biografen. Jeg studerede også hele formiddagen. I dag var ikke dårlig. En mand og en kvinde taler sammen. Hvornår skal de se en film? Hvorfor ikke tage i biografen på lørdag? Jeg ville virkelig gerne, men jeg har mit deltidsjob om morgenen. Hvad tid er du færdig med dit arbejde? Jeg slutter kl. 14. Så lad os mødes på caféen kl. 15 og se en film kl. 16. Okay. Hvornår skal de se en film? En mand og en kvinde taler sammen. Hvornår skal de se en film? Hvorfor ikke tage i biografen på lørdag? Jeg vil virkelig gerne, men jeg har mit deltidsjob om morgenen. Hvad tid er du færdig med dit arbejde? Jeg slutter kl. 14. Så lad os mødes på caféen kl. 15 og se en film kl. 16. Okay. You are at a train station, where you're attempting to buy a ticket for the express train from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy a ticket for the express train? Which option should you choose to buy a ticket for the express train? The option on the bottom left is for the express train. Lynto. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. Vogn nummer et, åttende række, plads C. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running?
There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Officielle helligdage, tredje søndag hver måned. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. The next tog stands ikke. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi rank. Udgang Øst You just got a text message from your hotel's pickup service. What does the first number refer to? What does the first number refer to? The number in the text message refers to the customer code. Kunde code. You're checking out the hotel's facilities when you see a notice on a door. What does the notice mean? What does the notice mean? The notice reads, do not enter. Ingen adgang. You search online for the nearest bus service. What bus service does the page show? What bus service does the page show?
the web page shows a free bus service. Gratis bus service. You're about to enter a small shop, but there's a handwritten note on the door. What does the message on the note mean? What does the message on the note mean? The note reads, I'll be right back. Ja, straks te bij. There's a national holiday coming up, and you notice that shops have special notices about having different opening hours. From when will the opening hours return to normal? From when will the opening hours return to normal? The notice says that the opening hours will be back to normal on January 7th. Then soon, January. Want to completely understand everything in your target language? In this guide, you'll learn the top 10 ways to improve your listening skills with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. The best way to practice listening is to just start listening. Expose yourself to native speakers as much as possible. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to get started. You can do the lessons on the site or on the app while you're on the go. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. Then click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, slow the lesson down. Now, if a conversation is too fast for you, simply adjust the playback speed in the lesson control bar and listen to it again at a slower speed. This will help you understand every word. Another way to pick apart every word that you hear is read along as you listen. Just read along as you listen and you'll never miss a word. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript that come with every lesson. The lesson notes give you the dialogue, the translations, and in-depth grammar tutorials. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear. You can also read along with the dialogue study tool which gives you the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation, including the audio and translations. Number four, listen to the line-by-line -line breakdown with the very same dialogue study tool. What makes this tool so powerful is you can listen to each line individually and replay it as much as you want until you understand every single word. This is useful for mastering fast conversations that you would miss otherwise. Number five, Listen to the dialogue track. The dialogue track gives you the conversation of that lesson in the target language only, no translations. And you have this tool in every audio lesson. Listen to it and see how much you can understand. Number six, download the dialogue tracks and make a playlist. This is a great immersion tactic. Download the tracks to your computer or mobile device. Then play them on a loop to immerse yourself in the language and improve your listening skills. Each track is only about 10 to 30 seconds, so it won't take you long. Number seven, play the vocabulary slideshow. You get the slideshow study tool with all of our audio lessons and vocabulary lists. Click on start slideshow, sit back and listen. 
You can also play it on loop and immerse yourself in the language. Number eight, get listening assignments from your Premium Plus teacher. You can also get assignments covering reading, writing, speaking, and even listening from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You can get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number nine, take the listening comprehension lessons. These lessons are designed to test your listening skills. You'll hear a dialogue in the target language. And based on the dialogue, you'll be asked to answer a question to check if you understood. There are no translations here, except for the subtitles. Read along with the subtitles to understand everything. Number 10, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons from absolute beginner level to advanced, then visit our lesson library. You get instant access to all of the pathways and lessons that will help you master all areas of the language, including listening. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. In this video, you'll learn three reasons you're never too old to learn a language, and you'll also learn three ways our learning system can help people of all ages to study efficiently. Number one, seniors have better focus. Learning a new language in your 50s or 60s may actually be easier than learning as a teenager or young adult. More mature adults can better focus on the details necessary to master a new language. Older people are also often more dedicated to their goals and put more work into achieving them. Seniors are better able to focus on completing lessons and reaching goals. There are a lot of distractions out there these days for young people. There's everything from Facebook to Instagram and all the usual drama of daily life at work and at school. Seniors are typically less concerned with these kinds of things and are better at focusing on tasks until completion. This is extremely important for language study, where regular practice and attention to detail are key. Not only are you never too old to learn, you may have some advantages over younger learners. Our language learning program has a number of special tools to make learning a new language in your 50s or 60s easy. You'll use the same resources as a tech-savvy teenager. Number two, learning is vital to healthy and happy living. Learning is actually vital to your health. Doing things like playing word games, doing puzzles, and even using online platforms like Luminosity do help keep the mind nimble. But nothing compares to learning a second language in terms of health benefits for your mind. Learning another language may be one of the very best retirement hobbies you can pick up. You can also apply your second language knowledge when you travel. Number three, there are health benefits to learning new things after the age of 60. Learning a second language increases the number of neural pathways in the brain. Forging these new neural pathways helps you code and sort the new language you are learning. In addition, there are other brain health benefits associated with learning a new language. Here's a list of benefits bilingual people can enjoy. Higher overall general intelligence, better memory and memorization skills, better perception of surroundings, better focus, concentration, and attention to detail. So in a very real way, learning a new language is one of the best and most practical retirement hobbies you can find because it helps protect against cognitive decline as you age. Now let's talk about how our language learning program has methods to make sure you can start learning in your 50s, 60s, and beyond. Number one, we have an intuitive, easy to use system. Learning an old age doesn't have to be hard or irritating. It can and should be fun. From your very first lesson, we'll make sure you're speaking fluently every day. You can start and stop each lesson as many times as you want. Study when you want, where you want, and at the pace you decide. Number two, you'll find special tools to boost retention and performance. As we mature, learning to use the right tools is vital to getting jobs done fast and right. So we make it easier than ever to make learning in old age fun and rewarding with a wide range of tools to boost retention and performance, including spaced repetition flashcards so you can learn vocab fast, 
line-by-line -line audio transcripts, so you can read along with each lesson. Pronunciation and accent review. Instructor lesson notes. Review quizzes. 2,000 core words, enough for fluency. You are truly never too old to learn with more than 20 tools and resources to help boost learning and performance. Number three, you'll get support every step of the way. Although you may never be too old to learn, it doesn't hurt to have a little help along the way. Our language learning system has helped thousands of seniors learn and master a new language with help and support at every step. We offer 24-7 assistance. Just send us an email. We have dedicated language experts standing by to help you with any problem or issue you may be experiencing. There is also instructor feedback. Have specific questions about a lesson or your progress? You can directly email instructors and get direct responses to any question you may have about your studies or lessons. Or try studying with your very own instructor. Members of our exclusive Premium Plus plan not only get a custom curriculum tailored to their very own goals, they also gain access to their very own language instructor. Learning in old age isn't just a luxury, it's crucial to helping avoid the onset of Alzheimer's, dementia, and other age-related cognitive issues. Specifically, learning another language helps increase overall intelligence and improve awareness, memory, and overall cognitive function. So not only are you never too old to learn a new language for health reasons, it's a great way to meet new people and start adventures. If you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.